Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. First of all, I have an announcement. You probably heard me before telling you that I'm going to go on Emily Moyer's show a bunch of times because I've been on her show a bunch of times. Well, this time, I'm going to see her in person. <laughs> yeah, she's coming here to San Diego. That's pretty exciting. So looking forward to that. And um, hopefully we'll have an interesting discussion. Now, I wrote this little poem at work today. It was a particularly boring day, so why not? And I'm not sure if this makes grammatical sense. So don't be all technical on me, please. Um, I mostly write songs. I mean, most of you know I play a few instruments. Um, I write a few poems a year, though, usually. Um, let's just go for it. Let's go outside. Step aside. Fill me with pride as I glide through the wall. A barricade of pain. Have I gone insane? Into the rain I run away from the sun into a mirage of defeat i'm back to the throne of powerless endeavors are you really so clever never say never to whoever may come there is nowhere to run from the ocean of lies are you surprised that you have taken a dive into the vortex of breathless wisdom have you seen the true kingdom amongst all dominions with so many opinions they gamble and hide by selling their minds to the unblind who use them inside their chambers of death. All they know is theft. They see the unseen by making fusion with illusion. And yet you are brave. But who are you trying to save? They have made their decision with no provisions. And the kingdom smiles as you walk many miles through the funeral pyre. Please have a seat. To, to have a greet, to get back on your feet, to quickly retreat. May I have a seat and shower you with love? Let it come from above like the white dove, as it twirls through the sands of time, to feed the sublime by loving its kind. As all things become one, give me your hand, as we embrace the land with the heavenly dove sent from above. All things grow together as we embrace face to face. We see that we've won as divisions decay. We are finally there, become self-aware. The road is clear, or so I hear. Now you may become that which you are, because that which you are is always fulfilled, embracing the one. Go on your journey forever and now, for now and forever, you will always be loved by the white dove sent from above. Anyway, there was that. <clears throat> I have a particularly fascinating Mandela effect that I was not aware of. I have to discuss. This is a band called Mamas and the Papas, who were popular in the 60s. I'm actually going to talk about two songs from two different bands. But this one in particular, because how relevant it is to me personally. Um, and the song is California Dreamin'. And um, it must have been one of the most popular songs of the 20th century. You probably heard it half a billion times yourself. If uh, it sounds familiar to you, it probably is. Go look it up and hear it for yourself. And um, the number of times I had to listen to the song growing up is uncountable countless because that was my late stepdad's favorite band he um died way back in august of 2006 i made a video about him a very long time ago he himself was a very strange and mysterious character his brother being the nsa director at the time um and him just having really weird stories um a really strange reputation. We had a lot of odd things occur in the house with him in it. Um, apparently, even according to his brother, he was a, a well-known hash dealer 
in the 60s as well as LSD. And he knew Eric Clapton. He knew Jer Janis Joplin and Jimi Hendrix. And he was known in the hippie circles in the 60s in San Francisco and in London. So that was like, a, if not his favorite band, certainly one of his favorite bands, the Mamas and the Papas. And that stupid CD I had to listen to half a billion times in the car as he drove high on painkillers because he was in chronic pain from a rare nerve disorder. I don't want to get into him right now. If anyone's interested, I'll dig up that video deep in my archives. And um, the point is that there's a line in the song um, where she says, and I got down on my knees and I began to pray. That's the line. That's, that's the line confirmed by the person who wrote it. If you see my community posts, I shared Brian Stavely's video on it, where she herself, or I can't remember, the there was two women and two men in that band. And um, the woman who wrote the song, well, because Mama Cass died a long time ago, so it was the other one, says that that was the line. And um, there's been countless remakes of the song, countless covers, all singing the same thing. And I got down on my knees and I began to pray. However, the line has always been, and I got down on my knees and I pretend to pray. And that is fascinating to me. I can't help but notice a connection between like the Mandela effect mocking either biblical things or things related to God in certain ways. And this is true for the next song as well. And one of the most Mandela affected things on the planet is the Bible. Words like bottle and couch are in the Bible, in, in the King James Version right now, which were never there before, which wouldn't make any sense since those words didn't even exist. So it's an interesting change because that is what a lot of people do, is it not? In the church, in the pews, they get down on their knees and they pretend to pray. Because Jewel sang in her song, and I will save your soul. Remember that song? She actually sings, I will save your souls, and I will save your souls, or something. Souls, one tiny change, one letter makes a significant difference, implying our souls pretending to pray in the fake churches. It's some sort of antagonistic attitude. It's some sort of feud between something very ancient that I'm yet to understand. I'm really thinking there must be some sort of connection between this sort of rivalry of religions. And it goes back much further than we think, thousands upon thousands of years, not recent memory. And I was talking about this very subject during the live stream about Madonna and uh, her sort of obsession with the Catholic Church. And so some of these Mandela effects have this biblical connection or these, re these subtle references to the soul or to prayer or to just being a human. Um, and it's targeted. It could be very well be targeted. And um, I just know for myself 100% that it was not pretend to pray. That was not the line in the song. It's just absolutely ridiculous for me to even hear that. Anyway, I'll leave it off at that. 
and uh, I wanted to know what you think. On Sunday, I'm taking my son, Sunday and Monday, to uh, one of the most bizarre art installations on Earth, probably called Omega Mart in Las Vegas. And uh, just imagine an Alex Gray painting, except you're walking through it forever. The place is such an absolute trip. Probably, um, I'll probably definitely share some pictures or something. It's a must see. <laughs> um, and tomorrow I'll go live at 7.45 to 8 p.m. Um, probably 8. And uh, I'll see you then.